monitored three times a week by our exercise physiologist to supervise their exercise training and that runs from about 14 weeks of pregnancy through to 28 weeks of pregnancy and, and that's about the time when women have their test to see if they have pregnancy diabetes or not. Okay, Was there, is there any connection, do they have, have they had diabetes beforehand or has this just come with pregnancy? Yeah, so um, it's a diabetes specific to pregnancy, okay. so basically up until that point. Yeah, history. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and, and why is this research so important? I know you've given us the reasons and it sounds like it can be pretty serious. Yeah, certainly. Mm. Um, you know, given those potential health implications for those, both mother and baby, if we can find a way of preventing the condition from happening, yeah, it can, can have such, such great great benefits mm. and it's I guess potentially could impact future generations as well because if those children are potentially at increased risk of obesity and diabetes later in life mm. then then themselves will have increased risk of you know having pregnancy diabetes and so on so it's sort of like mm. a recurrent cycle, a cycle. If you like. yeah. yeah with the um, the bike that goes stationed in, into their homes what's the reaction like are they are they find they're enjoying it is it yeah, yeah. look I mean most women most women volunteer for the study because okay. they're they're kind of hoping that they get yeah. the exercise program, okay. but at the same time, I have to admit, there are some women that are a bit horrified <laughs> at the thought of this bike being delivered. Yeah. And they have to exercise three times yeah. a week. But look, on the whole, the women, the women really enjoy it yeah. because they have had pregnancy diabetes in mm. a previous pregnancy. They, they all have at least one child already. Mm. Um, and any mum will tell you, finding time for exercise is really difficult. Mm. So this program aims to sort of take away all those barriers. So it's in the comfort of your own home. You don't mm. have to go anywhere. Mm. You don't have to worry about yeah, transportation, childcare, because kids can be you know at home yeah. around you. And the fact that the trainer comes to the home as well, you've got the mm. supervision aspect for any woman that's con concerned about safety. Mm. How long are they on the bike? for each, each session? Um, it, it really individual, so oh, some okay. women come into the study with a reasonable level of fitness, some mm. don't have any exercise experience, so it's all tailored okay. to each woman's individual levels. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, so the study is ongoing. Are there any results from previous research that you've been able to sort of see the direct implications of? Yeah, so you're right. The cycle study is ongoing, so we, we don't yet know the answer to the question of whether uh, our program will prevent pregnancy diabetes. But last year we completed a study focusing on women that already had pregnancy diabetes. So one of my PhD students, Rhiannon Holt, she led this particular study and she was looking at women diagnosed with GDM mm -hmm. could implementing a regular home-based exercise program at that time help manage the condition. So rather than prevention, we're looking at management. And okay. she, she found some really positive results. So women that completed her exercise program had lower daily sugar levels, mm -hmm. better, better glucose control. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's high sugar levels that's the whole problem with mm -hmm. the pregnancy diabetes. And she, she also found her program only ran for six weeks, but within that six weeks, she was able to change women's sort of intentions and attitudes towards exercise, um, as well as increase fitness. So that's, that's pretty important to know that within six weeks only, you can improve women's fitness during probably the, you know, the phase of pregnancy where things are starting to get a bit harder, they're getting bigger yeah. and so on. Mm. So what's been one of the highlights of your career? Um, I don't think I necessarily could name a specific highlight. Mm -hmm. um, I think some of the things I've been really appreciative yeah. are um, some of the amazing people that I've, I've been able to work with and that includes both um, people that I would consider I suppose mentors that have helped me along the way as well as um, I've, some of my PhD students are just yeah really great and that's probably one of the aspects of my job that I, I enjoy quite a bit. Um, other than the people probably the the opportunities that I've had to travel mm -hmm. I've been really lucky okay. um, yeah. in being able to attend conferences. Mm -hmm. um, most recently I was lucky enough to um, travel to Beijing, China mm -hmm. to talk about our, our cycle study over in, in China. Um, exercise isn't the done thing mm -hmm. during pregnancy so we were sort of um, myself and Professor John Newnham who, who's leading the cycle study um, we went over to yeah talk about our research and hopefully um, spread the word of some of the potential yeah. benefits of exercise. So if it's a place where it's not, not really the norm, how did they react to it? Um, really, really positively actually. We were surprised. We thought um, that we'd sort of, you know, presented our work and that it wasn't necessarily filtered.
through anywhere, um, but we were really impressed to, to learn through different um, sort of sources and avenues that, that things actually, um, yeah, were filtering through and things mm. were starting to um, take effect. They now have um, in one of the rooms in their hospital uh, a little room set up with a couple of bikes and women actually come into the hospital and, oh, okay. and do exercise yeah. during pregnancy, great. which is really encouraging. Yeah, great. Um, if a student is interested in this field of work, what major would they start with from the Bachelor of Science? Yeah, so in the Bachelor of Science, um, you'd be looking at uh, two, two majors. Mm -hmm. um, you'd be looking at a major in sports science and a major in exercise and health major structure um, is important because those two majors are required in order to get uh, accreditation from our, our governing body which is called Exercise and Sports Science Australia. So they're the two majors that you'd be looking at. Okay. Uh, you're also in a teaching role. What's the learning environment like for UWA students? Yeah, look, particularly, I mean, I can only comment on the School of Sports Science, Exercise and Health and it's, it's a really great environment. I think because um, in our particular school, um, we have, you know, the lecture setting, we have laboratory classes, tutorials and so on, but we also have a lot of practical classes where students are actually interacting in the physical sense, whether it's through um, a sporting game or whatever. And I think that really helps sort of build the relationships and so on. Um, in addition to just learning the material, you, you know, you make friends and, and that sort of thing, which I think makes a really big difference. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, does the School of Sports Science, Exercise and Health offer students any other experiences outside of the classroom? Yeah, we, um, we actually have uh, an award-winning, I have to say, um, practical program. Um, it's been running for many years now, essentially in the, in the third year of the Bachelor of Science, if you're doing the Sports Science and Exercise and Health majors, you complete 140 hours of practical experience or work experience, if you like, and there's a number of different um, potential um, routes that you can go for that experience, but students find that great to actually be out in the workforce, seeing what it's like doing what it is they think they might want to do in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, you've mentioned your PhD students, so um, are there any, are you looking after or supervising a couple, or is it, was it just that one? Yeah, um, well, Rhiannon that I mentioned previously, she's, she's now finished um, her PhD, which is great. She, she graduated earlier this year. Um, but I, I have a number of other PhD students, um, some also working on exercise and pregnancy, and then I have others that are working on sort of another research focus, which is the effects of exercise on appetite. So in terms of, you know, maintaining a healthy weight, it's all about mm -hmm what you take in through mm -hmm. food and drink and how you balance that with the energy you expend through exercise. Okay. Um, but what people often don't think about is how exercise itself might affect what you eat, your preferences or cravings for different mm. foods. So um, okay. that's that's another sort of research interest yeah. and I have a, a three PhD students sort of focused okay. in that area at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Sounds like there's some really good opportunities available for students through UWA and thank you so much Absolutely. for taking the time to um, come and speak to us and tell us a bit more about what's happening at school, sports, science, exercise and health. Thanks Kim. Thanks Eliza.